the transistor that gave life to machines in the 60s was to be superseded by a third generation computer technology, the integrated circuit. The ICL2966 mainframe incorporated these new components into its design. Oh, now we're beginning to see something that looks a little bit like a modern computer. Yes, um, we now have a visual display unit. Um, there would have been hundreds of these connected to the computer, but actually this isn't the computer. Uh, this is all the computer. Ah, everything I can see? Yes. And these look like lines of uh, washing machines, but I'm guessing that they're not since we're not in a laundress. No, they're disk drives. Right. And uh, if you come over here, we can see I have a modern day equivalent of a disk drive compared to the disk drive on the ICL. The drive head comes across the patterns, but this one is about 200 times greater capacity in data terms than this okay. one here. Okay, and that one would date from 2001, yes. 2002, something yes, like that? Yes, it's fairly modern, and you'd probably find that in the current machine. Okay, now, who used these computers? Who bought them? Government departments, uh, universities, and businesses. In fact, this one belonged to Tarmac, and they used it to process the records on maintenance and construction of the motorway system. So how was data input into the machine? Well, apart from the display terminals that I showed you before, where you would sit and type in data or load it in from a floppy, um, you'd also enter data through using an 80-column punch card. So there would be batches of these cards and put onto the reader and read in to the computer. So that's one way of getting data into the machine. What about data output? Well, to print out the reports and summaries and things after the processing, um, it would come out on a line printer here. And um, I can just uh, press the test print button. Oh, how wonderful. Right. And there we have the output. There we have the output. And let's open it up and show you the, the printout. Oh, lovely. Now, this is a third generation computer. Yes, it so is. So it had integrated circuits. Yes, uh, right. Um, here's an example of one of the many thousands that are inside this computer. And this would have typically contained a couple of hundred transistors yes, equivalents. That's right, and yes. these would have been mounted onto circuit boards. That's right, yes. I have an example here. We well, can see this is very, very similar to the components that are actually on this board. That's and there would have actually been rackfuls of these. Racks and racks of these. So What's the power consumption like? Well, the, the, the whole of the central processing unit is 15 kilowatts. 15 kilowatts, yes. so that's seven and a half electric fires. That's correct, right, yes. <laughs> yeah, yes. It's quite substantial. And where is the central processing unit? Well, it's, it's just over here, actually. It's these five cabinets along here. Five cabinets for a CPU still seems a long way from the processor in a laptop. But all that would change with the arrival of the fourth generation of computers when the same amount of computing power would be condensed into a single microchip.